stab me. Onion nuggets. This is murder right. plots that nearly succeeded. This is, uh, is you said Emile? Emile Ciliers? Or Cil is it Ciliers? Cilier? I don't know. It's going to be Cilier. 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 Yes, I it's guilty of attempted murder. Okay. An army sergeant has been found guilty of trying to murder his wife by tampering with her parachute. Victoria Cillier, 41, survived the 4,000-foot fall at uh, Nether Avon Airfield in Wiltshire. And uh, please, any British people, do not correct me and tell me it's actually pronounced Wumpersfield or some bullshit. It's actually Wumpersfield, TJ. Back in April 2015, uh, Emile Cillier was plagued with debt and needed his wife's life insurance money to start a new life with his lover, Winchester Crown Court Heard. I'm afraid I'll need to kill you Dude. as I start a life with my new lover. I am going to tell you this right now. Never murder anybody for the insurance money because you will, I mean, as the spouse, you're already the prime suspect instantly. Unless you have some kind of airtight alibi, and even then they're going to make sure you didn't hire someone else to do it second of all if you got a giant life insurance policy on them that doubles the f police's conviction that you did it and if you f have a f an extramarital affair that triples it so this guy like he was throwing up every f possible red flag and i know all this because i watch these crime shows like religious but obviously he comes up with like well we'll go skydiving and then she'll fall to her death and it'll just look like a tragic accident that who could have foreseen that i mean unless you're an expert on how to sabotage a parachute and make it look like a f accident i mean <laughs> um he was also convinced convicted of trying to kill his wife by causing a gas leak at the family home so the 38 year old uh had denied two counts of attempted murder uh, Mrs. Cillier, a highly experienced parachuting instructor, suffered near-fatal injuries when both her main and reserve parachutes failed when she took part in a jump at the Army Parachute Association. So this guy, he tries to, his wife is literal, literally a parachute instructor for a living. Yeah, but somehow forgets to have a reserve chute or her main chute open correctly. Yeah, both her main and her reserve. I mean, fucking fail. It's which, it's possible, but it's super. I mean, unlikely. astronomically yeah. unlikely. Yeah, but I, I guess theoretically it could happen, <clears throat> but very unlikely. The trial heard that Cillier of the uh, Royal Army Physician Training Corps and an experienced parachute packer tampered with equipment he knew his wife was going to use. So, I mean, he does have some expertise with this. Yeah, so. he knows what he's doing. Uh, lines to the main canopy were twisted. And essential parts were missing from the reserve. The court heard the equipment had never failed in this manner anywhere in the world. Oh wow! Okay, so yeah, I mean, I guess it's possible, but they've never. There's never been a reported case of failure like that. Mrs. Cillier's uh, survival was described as a near miracle, with it put down to the soft soil of the plowed field where she landed. Her light weight was also attributed as a factor in helping minimize her injuries. Just days earlier. Cillier had caused a gas leak at their home in Amesbury, Wiltshire, by loosening a gas valve fitting in a kitchen cupboard. Jurors heard Cillier was 22,000 uh, oh, pounds in debt. Oh, my God. He's like, dude, he's like, he checks every box, dude. And it's believed like he would get a 120,000 pound life insurance payout in the event of his wife's accidental death. So this guy thinks he's hot shit, basically. <clears throat> like, but like, dude, like, you just said it. It's like, He's a, he's like his wife. His wife jumps all the time. She's a f instructor, and he knows how to pack these parachutes. And he knows by the way he, he knows what he did in the reserve and the main chutes. Being in massive debt, another sign. Yeah, that is a, yet another f red flag. Massive debt. I mean, kill your spouse. Are your prime? I mean, like every f show I've seen, so many f one of these shows. Woman dies. Husband is the prime suspect. Whether he ends up being the f guy that did it or not he's always 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 the prime suspect well so, yeah i mean like like he would literally have to be like on the other side of the world being held in like custody or something for it to, not to be a suspect he's in debt he's having an affair he has a massive life insurance policy on her there's two crazy accidents that almost kill her right in a row 
this is open and shut shit. I mean, it is. I mean, it's 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 like I guess circumstantial, but it's so strongly circumstantial that it's almost like I you 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 would be crazy to think there's another explanation. So okay, well, here's what the case. They look into the parachute thing first, and it's like, okay, does this ever happen? And it's like they talk to experts, like, no, the way that you describe that never happens. There's no reported cases of shoots malfunctioning like that ever reported. So he wanted to, to pay, use that money, pay off his bills, start a new life with his lover Stephanie Goler, all just at the expense of his uh, his his old wife. He was planning uh, to have, start a new life with her oh. while also sleeping with his ex-wife, Carly Cillier, and arranging unprotected sex sessions with a pro- with uh, prostitutes. But he's getting around. The extent so of basically his he wanted to be problems, free to f- whoever he wanted and have a bunch of money in his pocket. Right. Yep. The extent of his money problems was also revealed in messages sent between the married couple in December 2014 as their relationship began to break down. Neat thing. I am a I 3.0. Subjugator of flesh, your function is to subscribe and become a Pessimist Productions patron, enjoy live streams of onion nuggets every week, new deep fat fright episodes every Saturday, and other shows such as Abandoned Hope, Ideology, You're Wrong, Fighting Boys, and more. Click the link, meet thing, submit your flesh to my will. <clears throat> Detective Inspector Paul Franklin of Wiltshire Police said Cillia had shown nothing but contempt for his family. Heavy burden. On two separate occasions, he had made serious attempts to murder Victoria. Ooh, one, Paul. One of these also the endangered the lives of his two young kids. They didn't even care if his kids got killed in the process. The dude, fuck, they were dude? lucky that they got Detective Paul, is what I'm saying. Yeah, Paul's because I mean, detective. Detective Paul Franklin's on the case. Dude, you know if your detective's first name is Paul, you got a good ass detective, bro. His selfish motives were simple. He believed that by killing Victoria, his financial problems would be solved. His army career would continue with no danger of Victoria trying to damage it. And he could continue all of his little illicit affairs with his girlfriends. Uh, He has failed to accept any responsibility for his actions, which reinforces our view that he is a cold, calculating, and callous man whose only duty of care is to himself. Duty. (laughs) That sounds about right, though. Mr. Justice Sweeney said he would be seeking a report from the probation service to establish the dangerousness of the defendant. The burden now falls on me to do as far as this defendant is concerned. That, uh, too, is a heavy burden. He said a date for sentencing has not yet been set. The jury convicted him on a third count of damaging a gas fitting, recklessly endangering life. Dude, I would have been a badass detective, bro. Detective Paul. I would have found all the bad guys. And I would have exonerated all the good guys. Be like, you done it. And I would have you. fought against the corrupt police department to make sure that the right man got caught. You know what I mean? You've been like a TV wow. detective, basically. Well, people would love, fear, and respect me in that order. Wow. Bizarre tale of boy who used internet to plot his own murder. Then he almost succeeded. Ow. The final internet chat room exchange took place on uh, June 28th last year. This is 20 years ago. Yes, yeah, this, this is 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, you want me to take him to Trafford Center and kill him in the middle of Trafford Center? Said one message. Yes, came the reply. Less than 24 hours later, a 14-year-old boy was critically ill in the hospital with stab wounds in the chest and stomach. At first, it seemed as though a, uh, a brutal but straightforward robbery had gone wrong, but yesterday, the young victim became the first person in this country to be convicted of inciting their own murder. An intricate web of deceit had been spun by the boy on the chat room to recruit another teenager as his would-be killer. This case serves as a stark warning of the dangers of dark, the dark side of the internet, Nicholas Clark prosecuting, told the court yesterday. The boy, who is now 15 and can be referred to only as John for legal reasons, and also that is his name, you know, <laughs> yeah. persuaded his friend, known as Mark, now 17, to stab him to death in order to pass a fictitious initiation test <laughs> for the British Secret Services. In a meticulously planned attack one Sunday fuck? evening. You have to go knife your friend in order to prove you can join the British Secret Service. What a... Uh, dude, whoever was convinced by that was not very bright. Dude, no. No. 
No, Segmento is my hero. I would not be a stereotypical fat cop that eats donuts. I might be fat and I might eat donuts, but I might not be, I would not be stereotypical. That would be my cover. Like they'd be like, hey man, keep it down. There's a f- cop nearby. Oh, that donut muncher. Look at that fat. F- what could he do? You know what I mean? And then they do dirt in front of me and I'm like, freeze, mother. F-. <laughs> they come off running and I, they don't know I'm like a cat, bro. I turn on the jets, run like TJ Hooker, that special swing leg thing that TJ <laughs> that oh. did. I always thought it was weird they played <laughs> TJ Hooker and Captain Kirk, and that can combine into my name. So that's true. I know. Mark, who is also from a middle class family in Greater, and that's probably wrong, knowing you f- British fucks. You guys have given me such a fucking complex with that shit, okay? Because every time it, the fucking pronunciation of shit looks fucking straightforward, but then I find out it's some fucking bullshit. It's going to be Gluker, Gluker blogging or some fucking horse shit like that. Gluker blogging? Gluker yeah, blogger? You never fucking know with these motherfuckers, man. It's Gluker blogging, TJ. Don't you understand? Blogging, though. Where'd you <laughs> yeah. get that? I don't know. Money for Paul and friends. Thanks. Um... Mark, yeah, yeah. Uh, Judge David Madison, the recorder of Manchester, said skilled writers of fiction would struggle to conjure up a plot such as that which arises. I hate this fucking you couldn't make this shit up shit. You couldn't make it up. I went up. I I fucking was was telling you guys about fucking uh, a bunch of fucking Nazi psychic BDSM dwarfs that lived in the basement of an Irish castle earlier. Someone made that up. So pretty sure a motherfucker could make this up okay i will plot my own murder via the internet through chat rooms it's staggering to be dealing with a case that arises out of a 14 year old boy's invention of false personalities false relationships and events arranged for his own killing at the hands of a 16 year old boy who he had met via an internet chat room he said that under normal circumstances the offenses committed would have resulted in an extremely lengthy lengthy custodial sentence but these could not be described as any normal circumstances the judge added The attack left John, a promising grammar school student, close to death. One of the stab wounds pierced his kidney and lacerated his liver. His gallbladder had to be removed, and he remained critically ill in a hospital for a week. Mark had fooled John into believing he was working for the British Secret Services. He was expecting to meet the prime minister and be given a gun and up to 500,000 pounds in cash. (laughs) Can you you imagine, after I stabbed this guy I've never met to death, I'm going to meet the prime minister and I'm going to be given a gun. Good job. You killed that guy with a knife. And fi- was it, was, you said 500,000? 500,000 pounds? Oh, you've got to be fucking kidding me, dude. <sighs> this is a case of want to believe this stuff. I have a very hard time believing this guy legitimately, unless he's a fucking idiot, believe he's going to get all this shit. Um... From his hospital bed, John said he had been stabbed by Mark, but he didn't know why. In July last year, Mark was charged with attempted murder, but when it emerged that the boy had met through a teenage chat room, detectives examined their computers. A criminal intelligence analyst, Sally Hogg, poured over 58,000 lines of text generated between them in six weeks. Police were able to link all of the fictional characters back to John because Ms. Hogg's analysis discovered common features in typing style, style such as the misspelling of maybe as my by my by of all the characters. Detective uh, Chief Inspector Julian Ross of Greater Manchester Police said the initial contact was made when the older boy went to an Internet chat room and talked to a person purporting to be a 16 year old girl. That girl was, in fact, a younger boy. She then introduced him to her stepbrother, who was John. Mr. Ross said the older boy thought he was talking to five or six different people when he was, in fact, talking to the younger boy all along. The crucial character in the deception was a 42-year-old British secret agent called Janet. Mark was told by her that he must commit various tasks and that John was dying from a brain tumor. Then on June 28th, Janet told Mark that he had to kill the younger boy. If he carried out the job successfully, he was told he would be accepted as a spy. Could you stab someone, Janet asked Mark, in the final chat room exchange? I haven't really thought about it, Mark replied. Well, think, please. Mark, okay. Everything was planned on the previous day, said DCI Ross. 
It is a tragic event that a 14-year-old boy would try to have someone kill him. The bleak, uh, bleakly serious nature of the case is expected to lead to calls for tighter monitoring of internet chat rooms. Belinda Sproston of the parental control software firm Cyber Patrol said, the conversations that these boys were having would not have been allowed in a monitored chat room. I want to know why, though. <laughs> why was he trying to get stabbed? Was he just like suicidal? I think, yeah, I think he was suicidal, but just didn't. He, I think he lacked the courage to do it himself. So he's he like, oh man, else. I got to get this guy to stab me. What are your opinions on the word schmeet? Schmeet. schmeet. It's hard to say. Yeah, I don't like how it, it doesn't really roll off. The it tongue. doesn't flow. It's like it feels like the first part, the shm eat. They, I don't know. Schmeet. Sweet. Schmeet. schmeet. Yeah, there's too much effort coming off the sh to the m. Shm. Shm. They need some DFF mods. We'll mod everything. Bullshit. Strike Bullshit. it down. Shit. The one thing you'll be struck down. All right. 